Now, when you get home, I want you also to remember to be mindful of the seasons. I've got a little topic now called the four major lessons in life to learn. So jot this phrase down. Life and business is like the changing seasons. This is some of the most valuable information I got when I was a young man, just starting out. Life and business is like the seasons. And then here's the next phrase. You cannot change the seasons. That's impossible. You can't rearrange the seasons. You cannot say, well, I'll take five harvest times, no winters, a few springs, and a summer or two. You can't rearrange them. The seasons are going to come however they're going to come, and you cannot change that. So you cannot change the seasons. But make this note. You can change yourself. That was the message I got when I was 25 years old with someone who took the time to teach me. You can change yourself. And by the way, only human beings have this extraordinary ability to make dramatic changes in their life. All of the life forms except human beings are driven by instinct and the genetic code. In America, the goose can only fly south in the winter. And why does the goose have to fly south in the winter in America? Because he's a goose. He can't fly any other direction. But that's not true with human beings. Human beings can go north. They can go south. They can go east. They can go west. Human beings can live one way for five years and then tear up that script and live a totally different way the next five years. Humans can do that. I'm asking you to utilize your power as a human being and change your life to whatever degree you want it changed. If you want your income to change, I'm telling you it's within your power. Any year you choose, you can make incredible changes in your life. You're not a tree, you don't have to stay. You're not a goose, you don't have to fly south. I'm telling you, Anytime you want to, you can say, I'm going to change my attitude. I'm going to change my income. I'm going to change my abilities. I'm going to do more than I've ever done before. Take on that as your God-given right as a human being to change your life to whatever degree you want it to change. So learn the value of the seasons now. You can't change them, but you can change yourself. Now, here's the four major lessons in life to learn. Number one, learn how to handle the winters. It's a fact of life. The winters follow the fall, the harvest. And pray tell how often. 6,000 years that we know of recorded history. Winter comes after fall. Night comes after day. Difficulty follows opportunity. Recession always comes after expansion. It's been the rhythm of life for the last 6,000 years of recorded history. Now there's all kinds of winters. There's the winter of the season, but there's all kinds of other winters. There's political winters. What a winter that was when the Nazis marched into Prague. What a winter it was when the communists put up the Iron Curtain. What a winter it was when Stalin finally took power in Russia. What a winter it was when Benito Mussolini took power in Italy. What a winter it was in Japan. What a winter it was in many parts of the world back during World War II, one of the longest winters, political winters in recorded history. So the winters are going to come. The winter of sickness, the winter of disappointment, the winter of devastation, social winters, economic winters, personal winters when your heart is smashed in a thousand pieces and the nights are unusually long, it's simply called wintertime. But the winters are inevitable. So it has been for the last six and a half thousand years recorded history. You say, well, Mr. Owen, what can I do about the winters of life? In World War II, we marched against the winter, and finally the spring came. We marched against the tyranny of communism, and finally the walls came tumbling down. We marched against the tyranny of the Nazis, and finally liberated the world for democracy and freedom. 
And that's what I'm telling you. It's possible for you to conquer your winters. And some are small little winters. When you get your first refund, a little small winter. When you show up, someone said, right, they put together the meeting, got everything ready, ready to show the story, ready to do the meeting, and nobody showed up. It's called a little piece of winter time. But anyway, that's going to come. The winter of a divorce, the winter of a death in the family, the winter of a tragedy, some things we can't understand. But here's what we do know. It's possible for us to get through the winter. Here's what's exciting about the passing of time. It takes you through whatever you're experiencing at the moment. That's what time will do, take you through the winter. Now, how do you handle the winters? Make this little note. You can get better and you can get stronger and you can get wiser. There's no winter that you can't overcome. There's no winter that you can't figure out how to survive. Make this note, winters don't last forever. Yes, the tyranny of the Nazis lasted for about five years, but it was soon over. Yes, the tyranny of communism lasted for 75 years, but finally that long winter was passed. So become wiser, become stronger, become better to handle the winters that are going to come in your life with the strength of the training, with the strength of these incredible products, with self-esteem bursting out all over, with the skills you're going to develop, you're going to be able to handle whatever comes your way. I promise you that. Now here's the next season. It's called the season of spring. And make this note, if you haven't made it in your head already, make it in your notes. Spring always comes. Sometimes the winter seems long. The night seems like it'll never pass. But sure enough, eventually, the night has to give way to the day. Winter has to give way to the spring. The difficult time has to give way to opportunity. The recession has to give way, finally, to the progression, to the expansion. Spring always comes. Just hang in there when the night is long. Hang in there when it's dark. Hang in there when you can't figure it out. And your spring will surely come. Now, here's what you must learn to do. Jot this note down. Take advantage of the spring. Just because spring comes is no sign you're going to look good in the harvest. You must do something with it. You must seize that moment. It is true that the dark time doesn't last forever, but here's what you've got to also understand. Spring doesn't last forever. In space language, we call it a window of opportunity. When they get ready to blast off, the rocket's headed for the moon, whatever, there's a certain period of time, that's the time you've got to go. If you don't go then, you've got to wait for another whole cycle to turn. I'm asking you to take advantage of it. Tell the story. Pass out the literature, make the calls, conduct the meetings, see the people, grab and seize this opportunity like you've never seized anything in your life before to make something remarkable of it. Don't be lazy, especially in the spring. Don't be distracted, especially in the spring. What if you asked the farmer to go bowling in the spring? He would think you were insane. The farmer would say you can go bowling in the winter. You can go bowling after the crop is in, but you certainly can't go bowling in the spring. And I want you to know after this extravaganza, an extraordinary new spring is upon us. If there was ever a time when you get back home, this is the time to massively increase your numbers. Get up a little earlier, stay up a little later, pour it on, take advantage of this spring that's here. Now here's my next point. You've got to take advantage of every spring that comes because there's only a handful. Life isn't forever. It finally comes to an end. One of the Beatles wrote, all things must pass. The sunrise doesn't last all day. Spring doesn't last all summer. The sunset doesn't last all night. We all have periods of time, periods of time, pieces of time. And when those pieces of time comes, what you've got to do is take advantage 
of each time that comes. At the longest, life is brief. At the longest, life is just a small period of time. So don't waste your springs. Don't waste the opportunity to talk to someone. Don't waste the opportunity to have a meeting. Don't waste the opportunity to come to next extravaganza. Don't waste the chance. Each spring that comes, take advantage of them because there's just a few. Don't let them all pass. Take advantage. Now here's number three. In the course of the seasons, one is the winter, two is the spring, three is the summer. The summer is called challenging time. In the summer, we've got two things going for us. One is opportunity, but the other is to watch out for your enemies. Nourish your values in the summer. Like a mother, nourish the values. Distributors you've got, make sure that they, give, that they get plenty of nourishment from you, plenty of training from you, plenty of understanding from you. Don't be short, don't be careless. Give them your best like a mother would give the best to her child. They deserve the best nourishment you've got. Don't shortchange them on food that'll help them to grow. Don't shortchange them on information that will help them to learn. Don't shortchange them on ideas that'll help them to transform their lives. Be like a mother in the summer and give the best you've got to everybody you can reach and everybody you can touch. It's called opportunity in the making. Be careful of those around you. So remember, it's human beings that make our lives valuable. It's not systems, it's not numbers in the marketing, it's not computers, it's not the printout, it's not points and it's not royalties. What makes us all rich beyond our wildest imagination is people. So be mindful of investing in the summer in every person you can possibly invest in. They will make you wealthy. Now here's what else you must do in the summer. Like a father, you must look out for your enemies. And believe me, we're going to have some. In the political world during our lifetime, there's been many enemies of freedom, enemies of democracy, enemies of free enterprise. It wasn't that many years ago that it was illegal to make a profit in the communist country. It wasn't that long ago until democracy was not flourishing like it is today. In America, you know, we've had 200 years of freedom and democracy and free enterprise for the last 200 years, but some have not been so fortunate. Some have not been so lucky. Let us learn to appreciate it when it does come our way. But there's gonna be political enemies. There's gonna be social enemies. I'm asking you to stand at the door. I'm asking you, whatever threatens you, threaten it back. Whatever pushes against you, push it back. Whatever wants to overwhelm you like a father, stand up, take control, and do battle with your enemies wherever you find them. Now, here's one more. We must also deal with the enemies within ourselves. Yes, we've got enemies on the outside. Saddam Hussein takes over Kuwait. We have to put together a half a million troops, go kick him out of Kuwait so that liberty will continue to flourish. But some of the enemies are not way off in some distant country. Some of the enemies are not personified in the Hitlers of the world and the Stalins of the world. Some of the enemies are a lot closer than that. They are within. And I wanna give you a list of some of the things to watch out for when you get back home called enemies within yourself. Here's the first one, indifference. Whatever you do, practice not being casual. You've got to shake off sometimes the lethargy that would say, oh, well, maybe it's not gonna work for me or I'll just go along and see what happens. I'm asking you, whatever you do, the intensity that you've gathered up here during this extravaganza, I want you to take this same intensity home with you. Don't be casual. Casualness creates casualties. Go home with a renewed intensity. Don't let indifference take over. Here's the next one, indecision. You've got to deal with it. Indecision is called the thief of opportunity. Make decisions even if it's a wrong decision. Do the very best you can, make a decision and go with it. 
If it doesn't work out because it was a wrong decision, I'm telling you, that gives you experience now to make a better decision. Here's the next one, doubt. We've all got to deal with the enemy of doubt. Cynicism has a unique way of crowding in on all of us. Being cynical about the government, being cynical about banks and money, being cynical about society, being cynical about the past, cynical about the future. I'm asking you, don't let that disease grab you by the throat and ruin your chances to do well. Yes, it's easy to doubt that it can happen. It's easy to doubt. We've all got fears that want to crowd in. And here's one of the worst ones of all, and that is to doubt yourself. I know we look at Mark, glamorous, handsome, good looking, extremely successful. Say, my gosh, I don't think that could happen for me. But I want you to know that Mark says, and I say to you, that if it can happen to us, it can happen to anybody in this room. Don't doubt your own ability. Don't doubt your own strength. If Mark can make it through some tough times, you can make it through. If Mark went through some strenuous times, you can go through those strenuous times. When the nights were long for Mark, I'm telling you, he made it, he made it, you can make it. If I can make it, you can make it. Next is worry. I mean, you know, you got to worry some. But here's the clue. Don't let it conquer you. If it's 2 o'clock in the morning and your daughter's not home, yes, you've got to worry. If you're in New York City and step off the curb and one of those yellow taxis is coming, yes, you better worry. But mark this down. Let worry alarm you, but don't let it conquer you. We all need to be concerned. We all need to be concerned. If there's enemies around, we need to be concerned. If it isn't going well, yes, we need to be concerned. But I'm asking you to let it concern, let it touch you, let it alarm you, but don't let it conquer you. Take all of the worries you've got and try to drive them into the smallest corner you can possibly find. If you don't, worry will be like a mad dog loose in the house. It'll have you in the corner. So whatever your enemies are here, drive them into a small corner. Here's the next one. Over caution. Hey, in the spring, if you're too cautious, you never will plant the seed. If you're too cautious, you won't take the chance. If you're too cautious, you won't step out front. If you're so cautious, you probably never would have done your first meeting. Make this note. You got to take a chance. Drive your tendency to be too cautious. Drive it into a small corner. Yes, you can't be gullible. No, you can't go for everything. Yes, you've got to be careful. Yes, but don't be so cautious that it paralyzes you. Don't be so cautious that it restricts your chance to do better. See if you can't conquer that. Here's the next one. Pessimism. Yes, there's the dark side. Yes, there's the problem side. Yes, there's the difficult side. But I'm telling you, it's not the only side. Yes, the glass is half empty, but it's also half full. Yes, there's the dark side, but there's the light side. Yes, the night comes, but so does the day. I'm telling you, don't be afraid of both sides, opportunity and difficulty, chance and danger. Learn how to handle it all. Now here's the last one. When you get back home, you've got to deal with it. I have to deal with it. We all have to deal with it. And that's complaining. Yes, there's room for a legitimate complaint. Yes, there's room for a legitimate business complaint. Yes, there's room for a legitimate complaint with the warehouse. Yes, there's room for a legitimate complaint once in a while with each other. But here's what I'm asking you. Don't let complaining master your life. If you become a chronic complainer, I'm telling you, nobody wants to be around you, chronic complainer. I wouldn't want you for a business partner. Don't let complaining conquer your life. See if you can't drive it into a small corner. That's the season of summer. Nourish your values like a mother and fight your enemies like a father. Even if you have to fight the enemies that are within yourself.
Make this note. Don't become a victim of yourself. It's possible to become a victim of tragedy. It's possible to become a victim of gossip. It's possible to become a victim of the things that happen out there. But here's the most important thing. Don't become a victim of yourself. Forget the thief in the alley that's after your purse. What about the thief in your mind that's after your promise? The thief in your mind that says you're too short. The thief in your mind that says you're too tall. The thief in your mind that says, well, yes, it'll happen to people out in California, but it can't happen way over here on this side of the world. I'm asking you to conquer that thief even though you find him in your own consciousness. I want to reassure you that you can do it. I want you to reassure you that you can make the decisions. I want to reassure you that no matter what the night, no matter what the storm, no matter what the difficulty, there isn't anybody here that can't figure it out, find some things to do, step at a time, yes. Minute at a time, yes. Day at a time, yes. Week at a time, yes. But there isn't anything you can't walk away from. There isn't any challenge you can't overcome. I want you to have that kind of belief in yourself. Now here's the last season. It's called the season of harvest. After the long summer that we've been faithful, we've been disciplined, we've nourished our values like a mother, we fought our enemies like a father. Then, as one writer said of ancient script, in due time, your harvest will come. And I want to give you that promise today one more time. I want to remind you of the seasons. Your day will come. Your harvest is sure. It'll be there for you. And then you'll be able to say, by gosh, the hard work has paid off. The lonely nights have paid off. Working hard every day has paid off. And my harvest has finally come. Now, a couple of things I want you to think about now in the harvest time. Here it is. Accept your personal harvest with full responsibility. No need to complain because it's your crop. So whatever your harvest is, you've got to say, that's my harvest harvest. Don't complain. Take responsibility. Now here's the next one. Don't apologize. Now, let me give you two phrases before we get to the four majors. This will set it up and you'll see where I'm going. Two key phrases for your notes. Here's the first one. Life and business is like the changing seasons. That's the first phrase. Life and business is like the changing seasons. One of the best ways to describe life, it's like the seasons. Frank Sinatra sings, life is like the seasons. Now here's the second phrase. Very important. You cannot change the seasons, but you can change yourself. You can't change the seasons, but you can change yourself. And see, that's how life gets better for you. Not by chance, but by change. Now, here's the four major lessons in life to learn. I've got my first book finished. came out a couple of weeks ago. This is in it. The four major lessons in life to learn. Here they are. Number one. Learn how to handle the winters. That's lesson one. They come right after falls with regularity. Some are long and some are short and some are hard and some are easy, but they keep coming. You must learn to handle the nights. They come right after days. You must learn to handle difficulty. It comes right after opportunity. You must learn to handle recessions. They always follow progressions for the last 6,000. See, it isn't going to change. The lesson you must learn is how to handle it. And there's all kinds of winters, right? The winter when you can't figure it out. The winter when it all goes smash. The winter when it turns belly up. The winter when it won't work, when you've run out of money and you've got a broken heart. See, those are winter times. There's all kinds. Economic winters. 
social winters, personal winters, when your heart is smashed in a thousand pieces and the nights are unusually long, your prayers seem to go no higher than your head. It's winter time. Barbara Streisand sings, it used to be so natural to talk about forever, but used to be's don't count anymore. They just lay on the floor till we sweep them away. You don't sing me love songs and you don't say you need me and you don't bring me flowers anymore. A song of winter. But see, the disappointments come. Those are normal. That's part of life. But the question is, how do you handle it? How do you handle the coming winters and the disappointments and the downtimes? Well, you can't get rid of January by tearing it off the calendar. <laughs> but here's what you can do. You can get stronger, you can get wiser, and you can get better. The winters won't change, but you can. And that's how life changes for you. See, before I understood when it was winter, I used to wish it was summer. I didn't understand. When it was hard, I used to wish it was easy. I didn't know. And then Mr. Schof gave me a part of his very unique philosophy when he said, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. See, that triggered my whole life change. Don't wish for less problems, wish for more skills. Don't wish for less challenge, wish for more wisdom. That's the key. So that's lesson one, learn how to handle the winters. Here's lesson two, learn how to take advantage of the spring. That's the second one. Spring is called opportunity. And spring follows winter. What a great place for it. If you were gonna put it somewhere, that'd be the place to put it, right after winter. And pray tell, how often does spring follow winter? Every year with regularity, 6,000. You can almost count on it. See, opportunity always comes. Days follow nights. Isn't that terrific? Opportunity follows difficulty. But here's what you must learn to do. Underline these two words in that key phrase. Take advantage. Underline those two. You must learn to take advantage of the spring. See, just because spring rolls around is no sign you're gonna look good come fall. You gotta do something with it. In fact, you have to get good at one of two things in life, planting in the spring or begging in the fall, or get somebody to do it for you. See, those are about the only alternatives. Now, here's what else you must do. Take advantage of the springs quickly because there's only a few. Just a handful of springs have been handed to each of us. They don't come forever. Life is fairly brief. So you got to read every book you can get your hands on on what to do with your springs while they're here. And take advantage, they soon run out. The Beatles wrote, life is so short. And for John Lennon, it was extra short. But life is brief. Elton John sings, she lived her life like a candle in the wind. It's brief. So whatever you're gonna do with your life, you got to get at it. Don't just let the springs pass, pass, pass. Here's the third major lesson in life to learn. Learn how to protect your crops all summer. You gotta take care of what you start. Sure enough, as soon as you've planted your garden in the spring, the busy bugs and the noxious weeds are out to take it. And here's the next bit of truth. They will take it <laughs> unless you prevent it. And that's the third major skill to learn. You've got to learn to prevent the intruder from taking all the good you start. It's one of the challenges. Here's two key phrases under number three. First one, all good will be attacked on this planet. Maybe not the next one we get to, but on this one, all good will be attacked. Every garden will be invaded. Not to think so is naive. 
And here's the second phrase. All values must be defended. Political values, social values, community values, family values, marriage values, friendship values, business values. Every garden must be tended all summer. Third major lesson. Now here's number four. Fourth major lesson in life to learn. Learn how to reap in the fall without complaint. Learn to reap come harvest time without complaint. Take full responsibility for what happens to you. It's one of the highest forms of human maturity, accepting full responsibility. It's the day you know you've passed from childhood to adulthood, the day you accept full responsibility. And another note. Learn to reap in the fall without apology, without apology if you do well, and without complaint if you don't. That's maturity. I used to have that long list of reasons why I wasn't doing well. To explain, you've got to explain, right? Otherwise, you're going to look bad. I used to have this funny list called reasons for not looking good. I used to blame the government. I mean, you can believe that or not. It was at the top of my list. I had a lecture second to none. The government, that was on my list. I used to blame taxes. Look what you got left after they take everything. And they expect you to do well. That was on my list there. Prices, that one's easy, right? You walk into the supermarket with $20, come out with a little half bag. So I had that on my list. I used to blame the weather. I blamed the traffic. I used to blame my car. I blamed the manufacturers. I used to blame the company. I blamed company policy. I used to blame the training program. I blame my negative relatives. They were always putting me down. I blame my cynical neighbors. They're just selfish, looking out for themselves. Won't loan you money? They were on my list. <laughs> I used to blame the economy. I blame the community. That's a pretty good list for not doing well, isn't it? I thought it was good. I'll never forget one day. Mr. Schof is very kind, but he was also very blunt. And this was no exception. And I'm glad he was blunt. There's a lot of things I'd have missed if he hadn't have been blunt. One day with sort of a curious look on his face, he said, Jim, just out of curiosity, tell me, how come you haven't done well up until now? Excellent question. <laughs> I thought, well, so I won't look too bad. I'll go through my list. <laughs> and this list I just gave you, I put that on him. And he was very patient. He let me go through the whole thing, the government, the weather. I went through this whole thing. When I finished, he looked my list over very carefully. He said, Mr. Rohn, big problem with your list. You ain't on it. <laughs> How brilliant. <laughs> when I went to work for him a few months later, I learned very quickly to tear up my list, reasons for not doing well, and I threw it away. And I got me a fresh piece of paper and I put one word on it, me. There's a black heritage spiritual that says it's not my mother, nor my father, nor my brother, nor my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. See, I used to blame everything outside. And then let me give you a little philosophy that helped turn my life around. For your notes, here it is. It's not what happens that determines the quality or the quantity of your life. It's not what happens. And the reason is because what happens happens to about everybody. No different. The sun went down on all of us last night. A common event, a happening. 
And I found out that the same things can happen to two different people. One gets rich and one stays poor. Why is that? It's because it's not what happens, but rather it's what you do that changes everything. So that's a key phrase. It's not what happens. It's what you do. What happens is about the same. You might put that in parentheses here. Same. What people do, that's what's different. Somebody says, yeah, but you don't understand the disappointments I've had. Come on. Everybody's had their share. Disappointments are not special gifts reserved for the poor. Everybody has them. The difference is what you do about it. So here's one of the key questions of the evening. Starting tomorrow, what are you going to do that'll make a change in your life's direction? Good question. What are you going to do starting tomorrow that'll make a difference? Now see, if you don't do something starting tomorrow that'll make a difference, guess what? It's going to be the same. <laughs> And see, that way you can guess what the next five years are going to be like. Look at the last five. Because the next five are going to be like the last five, unless you, major key, tomorrow, change it all. Or change a little, or change something, or don't change. It's choice time. You can do whatever you want. But it's nice to know any day you wish you can change your whole life. What can you do starting tomorrow? that'll make a difference? Good question. What can you do with economic chaos, massive disappointment? What can you do with a broken heart? What can you do when it won't work? Good question. So if I had a word with you tonight, one-on-one, -on -one, just you and me, I think my personal advice to you would be, this year, 1981, reach down inside of you and come up with some more of those remarkable human gifts. They're there, waiting to be utilized. And then change anything for you you want to change. And I challenge you to do that because you can change. If you don't like how it is for you, change it. If it doesn't suit you, change it. If it doesn't please you, change it. If it isn't enough, change it. And I challenge you to do that because you can change. See, you don't ever have to be the same again after tonight, only by choice.
nightmares in my head I fear That the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Anxiety, filling up every space, no privacy And silently, it could build and build until you finally see Whoa, it's taking over, damn no closure, moving closer no exposure, I just wanna be a loner uh, Some can't stay sober, looking over all their shoulders Like moving boulders just to get out of the home It sucks, I've had enough, I don't wanna feel the stuck Under the rug, all my problems that I shove I got nightmares in my head, I fear That the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares in my head, I fear That the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I've been feeling weird, I can't seem to focus good enough Nothing's really clear, sometimes it could be a little tough I just need to feel like the end's in sight for me But, let's be really real, anxiety can foggy all this stuff I've been feeling weird, I can't seem to focus good enough Nothing's really clear, sometimes it could be a little tough I just need to feel like the end's in sight for me But, let's be really real, anxiety can foggy yeah. all this stuff it sucks when you finally feel like giving up Oh God, no luck Everything feels like you're sticky stuck I'm lost, handcuffed To the bed where I sleep, don't give a fuck Can't stop, unplug Feeling overwhelmed, I think I've had enough uh, Gotta find a way to get some energy Gotta find someone who's a good friend of me I need purpose to make it all worth it I'm still searching and I'm still learning I want a life that's filled with memories Not a life with a grand in front of me I need focus to keep me from hopeless Psychosis if I keep moping I got nightmares in my head, I feel